Hi folks, I am Miranda and you are here with May Yoga. Today's video is going to be a full length yoga practice, something to really work out the body. Most important thing we're going to need today, other than that gorgeous water of course, are some yoga blocks. Having at least one, but two would be better just so you can kind of adjust the height as you need. So make sure you have that nearby. And if this is your first time practicing with me, please check the description below this video for a link to a separate video called Tips for a Safe Yoga Practice and watch that first. To begin, please find a comfortable seat. You can even use one of these lovely blocks, kind of bring it underneath your sit bones, give you a little bit of height, just kind of letting you arrive to this moment a little bit more softly. So sitting up nice and straight, closing the eyes here for a moment. And for this practice, if you would like to create an intention, something that you have a wish for another person or a personal goal for yourself. So perhaps your intention can be, I intend to create more peace and harmony in my relationships. I intend to release all anger towards the past. Anything that you want to direct your energy towards today. And feeling that intention, seeing it in your mind, you're gonna bring your hands together at your heart to an Anjali Mudra, palms pressing slightly together. And we'll begin our practice and seal those intentions with our three deep breaths. On the inhale, the arms move in a circle above the body till the palms touch overhead. And on the exhale, bringing the hands back towards the heart and joining me to chant Om on the exhale, if you wish. So we begin all with our next big inhale. Inhale, move those arms in a wide circle. Palms touch overhead and Om. slow breath. And then gently release your hands to your legs and open your eyes. So we'll start our warm up with our Surya Namaskar set. Coming to a standing position at the top of your mat and I'll see you there. All right, my friends, so everyone finding mountain pose to begin. Feet are about hip width distance apart, parallel to each other. You want to think about scooping that tailbone down, opening the shoulders back, squeezing the shoulder blades together, and then relaxing the arms. Palms can be facing forward. Sitting up nice and tall, all four corners of the feet connected. You won't need your yoga blocks for now for the first couple of Surya Namaskar, but you will want them later, so have them towards the front of your mat. Holding here in Tadasana. And then bringing your hands together at the heart. We're going to go very slowly on this first set just to warm up the body nice and gently. So open the eyes, bend those knees, swoop the arms up. Just go into a straight line for this one. So the arms are straight, palms are facing each other, and relaxing the shoulders, making space around the ears. Keeping that pelvis tucked forward, just standing up nice and tall. Inhale here. And then exhale, start to hinge at the hips, draw the arms forward in a straight line. Keep that back straight to you about halfway and then let yourself fold forward. Just letting the torso hang here, letting gravity start to open up the backs of the legs, your back here a bit. Relaxing the face, maybe close the eyes. If you want, you can do a little wiggle. Start to loosen the body up. Wiggle the toes, maybe make little circles with the wrist. 
And on your next inhale, we're going to do a half back. So just inhale, draw the shoulders up to the ears, squeeze the shoulder blades together. You think about trying to make a table with your back and your arms and legs here. So you're looking down at the ground and just holding that space here, keeping the back straight, breathing in and exhale. Draw the hands down to the mat, bend the knees here, give yourself a little bit of play. We're going to work on that left side first. So stepping that left foot back into a lunge here. Maybe staying up on the fingertips for this lunge here, just giving yourself this space, starting to open up the hips nice and easy. You want that front knee over that ankle. You're on the ball of the back foot. Your feet are hip width distance apart. Holding here for a breath. And then draw the hands so that they come flat to the mat. Open up those fingers nice and wide. Push into the palms. Stepping that right foot back and come into your first plank. Very important tips about plank. You want to think about making a straight line from the top of the head down to the bottom of the feet. So pulling in that core, your wrists are underneath the shoulders. Your hands are hip, your shoulder width distance apart. You're looking down at the mat, making a nice long line in your back. If this ever gets too much, you can always drop the knees down and do a modified plank. It's fine. So inhale here. And then everyone together, bend those knees, bring the knees down. And now keep the elbows close to the sides of the body. Draw the chest down to the mat and then the chin. Blocks are really close to me, I'm going to move them out a little. So dropping that chin down, squeezing the lower back, starting to do a little back bend action here. And then go ahead and drop the entire front of the body down to the mat. Hands are underneath your shoulders. You're going to push into the hands, just doing maybe a half cobra here. All right, keep those elbows close to the ribs though. So you're doing a nice back bend, looking forward, squeezing the lower back. Breathe in and then release yourself back down to the mat. We're going to come up to our hands and knees, nice and gentle progression to our first down dog. So walk the knees forward a little bit, tuck those toes under and on your next exhale, push into the feet, bring those hips back, find that down dog. Now this is our first down dog, so let's just walk the feet out, pedal those feet, maybe keeping a little bend in the knees here if you like, working into our nice down dog, last breath. And on that next inhale, float that left foot behind you and exhale, bring it to the front to the high lunge. Again, staying up on the fingertips here for this first set. And we're going to do our hip flexor work. So you're going to inhale, draw yourself towards the front of the mat a little bit more. Exhale, bring yourself to the back. Straighten that front leg slightly, drop the head. Inhale, move towards the front. And exhale to the back. Last one here, inhale. And exhale. Good job, guys. Inhale, step that right foot to the front, and exhale, fold. This is our second forward fold. So maybe you're feeling a little bit more loose just from that half set of the Surya Namaskar. So maybe you can even make some space between the ring finger and the pinky finger. Lock that into the crooks of your elbows. Let your head hang here. A simple arm bind that brings a bit more focus to the lower back. And from here, maybe sway a little side to side. All right, and then returning to center, releasing the arms if you had that bind, bending the knee slightly. Inhale, swoop those arms, come all the way back up to the top. Palms face each other at first, and then interlace the fingers. Turn the palms out. You're stretching into the hands here, stretching the wrist a bit, looking up at the sky. And then draw the palms together and exhale, bring them to the heart. Closing the eyes here, noticing the subtle differences between the left and the right side of the body. 
going to work on bringing the right side back into a little bit of alignment here. So opening the eyes will begin on the other set. Bend the knees, inhale, swoop the arms up. First going into that straight line again. And then if you'd like, we can start to do a cervical back bend together. Just moving the arms just a little here for this first one. Opening the chest a bit more. Make sure that you do keep that tailbone scooped under so you're not putting any strain in your lower back here. Just working into the shoulders, the upper back. Inhale. Exhale, hinge at the hips, arms come forward in that straight line until you're halfway and then fold. Now here, if you'd like, you can use those fingertips. Walk yourself over from one side to the other, using your hands to help do a little bit of a twist. Last few moments here, and then coming back to center. Inhale, go into that flat back, squeeze the shoulder blades together, arms are dangling in front of you. You can either leave the hands loose in front of your body, or if you want, you can bring them to the front of the legs, either below or above the knees, and push slightly into those legs. This kind of helps draw open that chest a bit more. Again, keeping that nice strong core here, pulling the belly button in. Breathe in and out. Bring the hands down towards the mat, bend the knees a little if you need, stepping the right foot back now into that high lunge. Remember our tips here, front knee is right over that front ankle, 90 degree bend. That back leg is straight, your feet are hip width distance apart. Sinking into the hips here, and then drawing the hand so that the thumbs are pointed towards the opposite hand, your middle fingers are pointed towards the front, pushing into the palms, stepping that left foot back and finding that plank pose. Squeezing it all here, especially that belly button, plank is an amazing pose, especially for our core. So holding in here for two more breaths, really warming up the whole body when we hold this pose. And then on your next exhale, you can do knees, chest, chin again, or you can simply lower yourself down to the mat however you like, holding here, and then moving towards a cobra. So dropping the hips, hands under the shoulders, push into the hands, drawing the shoulders open. Looking forward still. Elbows are kept close to the ribs. Awesome. And now lowering yourself slightly, tuck those toes under, go to your down dog however you need. If you need to go up to hands and knees, it's fine first. Finding that down dog, hips move back, feet are hip width distance apart, ears are between your arms, kind of giving you that alignment there. And still let's go ahead and walk the dog a little. Pedal those feet out. And on your next breath, we're moving that right foot now. Right foot floats up behind you. Exhale, bring it to the front. We're gonna move to that lovely hip flexor work now. So stay up on the fingertips here. Inhale, move forward a bit. Exhale, straighten that front leg, move to the back. Inhale, looking forward. Exhale, head drops down. Last one here, inhale forward, and exhale back. Bend that knee, inhale, step the left foot front, and exhale, fold. This is our last forward fold we're gonna hold. So go ahead and grab the backs of the legs. Give yourself a bonus pull here. So using your hands to pull you a little deeper, dropping that head down, closing the eyes for a moment. And then to release, let the hands go. Bend the knees to take the pressure out of the lower back. Inhale, swoop arms up. Palms touch. For this last moment, we're gonna do a little calf raise here. So come up on the balls of the feet, strengthening the ankles. Maybe do a little wobbly, it's always good for that too. And now exhale, come back, 
Hands to the heart, close the eyes. All right, so before we begin our next set, maybe you'd like to grab a little bit of water or juice if you have juice like me today. A little hydration here. And this next set is going to be the same sequence, but moving with our breath. So it's going to be a little faster. We're going to warm ourselves up a bit more. Third set is going to be with those props. So you do want to have those in front of the mat for you when you reach that third set. All right. So keeping it simple though here for our second set, starting again, mountain pose, hands together at the heart. To begin, inhale, bend the knees, swoop those arms up, going into that cervical back bend. Exhale, draw the arms forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, hands come down, stepping that left foot back, hold here for that inhale, get the palms nice and flat. Exhale to plank. Stay here for that inhale. Exhale, take that vinyasa coming down to the mat. Inhale, swim on through. And exhale, hips up, hold and down dog for three breaths, guys. Getting those heels a little closer to the mat, pushing into the hands, protecting the wrist. Last breath here. Left foot inhale floats up and then bring it to the front. Inhale, right foot steps forward and exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, swoop up, palms touch, and exhale, making the Anjali Mudra, closing the eyes for a moment. And now starting on our right side, open the eyes, inhale, arms float up, Cervical back bend. Exhale, draw yourself all the way forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands come down, stepping that right foot back. Stay in this lunge to get those palms nice and flat to the mat. And then exhale, move to the plank. Breathe in here. And now take your vinyasa. Exhale, coming down. Inhale through. And going to that down dog, staying in down dog for three. Making sure that those feet are hip width distance apart. Pressing a little deeper in. Last breath here. On that inhale, right foot floats up. Exhale, bring it to the front. Inhale, left foot steps forward. And exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive, palms come together overhead, and exhale, back to the heart. Beautiful, guys. That should feel a little bit more warmed up now. Maybe grab a little bit of water. You're talking like me, always need that water. And now we are gonna need those beautiful blocks, at least one block for this part anyway. So have that towards the front of your mat, Here we go. All right. So finding our mountain pose here, preparing for this third set. All right, let's get started, guys. Open the eyes. Inhale, swoop the arms up, moving into that upper back bend. Exhale, draw the arms all the way forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hands come down, you're stepping that left foot back. Now I want you to hold here in this lunge, so make sure those feet are nice hip width distance apart. You're gonna grab that block, all right? So the nice thing about the block is it's a good way to stabilize yourself and also bring a little intensity in your practice if you like. So we're gonna move up to warrior one. So have your block between your hands like this, and on that inhale, swoop those arms up, come up to a warrior one. Now you can keep that back heel up or you can turn it to 45 degree angle. If you need that stability there, it's fine. Either one you like. And of course, if you wanna make it more intense, you can always lift up that front heel, kind of challenging yourself here with your strength and balance. The lovely thing about this block is you can put pressure on it and engage all of your arm muscles in a static way. So holding here, squeezing the block, Pushing on that block, engaging those arm muscles. 
We're gonna go through a little bit of a flow here. So on your inhale, straighten the legs and kind of hinge forward a little. Still pushing on that block. And on the exhale, coming back down to warrior one. Two more of these. Inhale, come up, hinge forward. Exhale, return to warrior one. Last one, inhale, up and forward. And exhale to warrior one. Lovely, we're gonna move to warrior three now. So kind of give yourself maybe a little bit of space here. Inhale, pop up, move those arms forward, coming to warrior three. Still pressing on that block, lifting yourself here, holding. And now release gently back, coming to warrior one, and then releasing that block. We're gonna finish with that vinyasa, so hands come down to the mat. Exhale, back to plank. Hold here for the inhale, and exhale, come down. Inhale through, and exhale, down dog. You should be feeling lovely little ability to go deeper in your down dog. So really press those heels back. One more breath here, guys. And then left foot, inhale, float up. Exhale to the front. Inhale, right foot forward. And exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, swoop up. Palms touch. And exhale, back to the heart. Hold here in mountain pose with the eyes closed, taking your breath. Okay, before we move to our right side, maybe grab a little bit more water if you need it with me. We're going to be moving on the right side now. So again, make sure you have that block there towards the top of the mat. Hands are at your heart. One breath here. Open the eyes and begin. Inhale, swoop the arms up into that cervical back bend. Exhale, draw the arms forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, palms come down, stepping that right foot back, and we're holding here. So make sure you've got a nice good lunge here. That front knee is at 90 degrees, feet are hip width distance apart. And now grab the block. Remember, it's your choice how you hold this block. If you're pressing really hard on it, engage those arm muscles, awesome. So you're gonna inhale, swoop the arms up. Hold here in warrior one. Remember your challenge here is you can keep that back heel up. You can always turn it down 45 degrees if you need. Keeping it up for more challenge or even more of a challenge picking up that front heel. So holding here for one more breath. And then we're gonna move in through our flow. So inhale, come up to straight, hinging forward, pushing into the block. And then moving back down to warrior one, picking up that front heel with me perhaps. Good, moving forward, inhale up, and exhale, back down to warrior one. Last one, inhale up, and exhale, warrior one. Okay, now you're gonna be giving yourself a little boost here, we're moving towards that warrior three. So inhale, pop up, bring those arms forward, right leg floats up, squeezing the block here, giving yourself that static strength on those arms, Inhale, and exhale. Release slowly back. <laughs> Drop that block there. We're gonna finish with our vinyasa. So bring the palms down, inhale, exhale to plank. Breathe in here, and now coming down to the mat. Inhale through, and exhale, down dog. Hold here in this last down dog for three breaths as always getting those heels as close back to the earth as you can. Straight back, pushing into the hands. Last breath. And now floating that right foot up behind you. Inhale, exhale, bring it to the front. Stepping that left foot forward and exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, swoop up. Palms come together and exhale, 
back to the heart. Holding here in our mountain poses, just feeling all those differences in our bodies from the beginning of this practice to now. Challenged ourselves, we challenged our balance, worked on our strength, our movement, our range. So taking this moment, feeling some nice, beautiful appreciation for what you've done so far. Beautiful. So now we're going to be moving to the balance part of our practice. It's always nice after all the movement of the sun salutations to kind of bring in balance to kind of center yourself a bit more. You will need that block. So having a block here, you're still going to be facing towards the front of the mat. So have the block a bit in front of you here. We're going to start on our left leg. So I want you to have that block over to the left part of the mat towards the top of it. We're going to be moving into Artha Chandrasana, which is half moon pose. So to begin, I really want you to make sure that you have that good platform on your left foot. So maybe step the right foot back, wiggle the toes on that left foot, and then think about a zipper. You're zippering from the pinky toe to the big toe. So start with the pinky toe, bring that down, finishing with the big toe last, opening your toes as wide as you can. And then stepping the right foot forward, picking up the left heel and pulling it back. Now, some people do better balance off the mat, so you kind of choose if you feel like you need that, that hard floor, go ahead and move to it, it's fine. So shifting our weight a little over to our left side. And then on your next exhale, you're gonna hinge at the hips and draw that left hand to the top of that block. Getting it nice and flat to the block, and then you're going to pick up that right leg behind you, turning the right foot so the toes are pointing out. You can keep that right hand on the hip here, or if you like, you can float that hand up to the sky. Holding here. If you do really want to challenge yourself, you're feeling it, you can always turn your head a little, maybe move your head, looking up. And then exhale, gently release back to the floor. Just going to a forward fold, letting that all out. You can pedal the feet here, walk it out. And then bringing that block towards the right side. We're moving over to the right now. Make sure you have that nice grounded there. And then we're going to do the same work with our feet that we did on the other side. So left foot steps back. Move the toes on the right foot, zipper them down, starting from the pinky toe down to the big one. And then left foot forward, pick up the right heel, open it up. Make sure you have a good foundation here for your balance as much as you can. And start to shift the weight over to the right side. When you're ready here, breathe in. And then exhale, hinge at the hips, draw that right hand to the top of the block. And when you can, you're going to start to lift that back leg, bringing it up behind you and then turning it out so the toes are pointing out to the left side of the body. Staying here or maybe drawing that left arm up to the sky. And final challenge, of course is to start to turn that head nice and slowly, drawing it all the way up so you're looking up at the sky. Inhale and exhale. Slowly release, going into that forward fold, releasing the block, walk the feet out. Nice. Bend those knees a little. We're going to start to draw the hands, curving the spine, stacking the vertebrae on top of each other. And at the top, squeeze those shoulders up and roll them back. Lovely, guys. So great balance work. We're going to do a nice standing pose now, again with that block. So have that handy, bringing it to the left side of the mat towards the front. We're going to move to a standing revolved triangle. 
So to do this, you're going to have the feet starting like in a mountain pose, and we're going to step that right foot back about three and a half feet, stepping it back, and keeping the legs straight here, okay? Turning that back foot so it's about 45 degrees, that front foot is pointed to the front of the mat. Facing towards the front, inhale here, exhale, start to hinge at the hips. And you're going to have that block, have it on the top, like longest length, I guess I should say, top height. Bringing that right hand, crossing it over so the block is on the outside of the left foot. And then pushing into the block here, you're going to draw that left arm up to the sky. So doing a twist here, working into our shoulders, pulling in the core. Squeezing it all here. Lovely spinal work. Holding for two more breaths. And then on that next exhale, gently release that left arm down. Go ahead and bring the block over to the other side. Bending that front knee, step that right foot forward, coming back to standing. Moving to the other side now. So left foot steps back about three and a half feet behind you, hip width distance, turning it at a 45 degree angle and squaring your hips towards the front of the mat. Inhale here, exhale. Again, hinge at the hips, drawing that torso towards that front leg. And now left hand crosses over, comes to the block on the outside of the right foot, pushing into that block, finding the balance here. And when you're ready, release that right hand off the hip, float it up to the sky. Squeezing it all in here, inhaling, taking a few breaths. Inhale, and gently exhale, release. Dropping that block to the front of the mat, bending that front knee, stepping the left foot forward, Anjali Mudra at your heart. Lovely. Next we're going to be doing a crescent lunge. It's kind of a cool thing you can do with the block to really work deeper into those hips. So coming down to your hands and knees any way you like, coming down to the mat and having that block so that it is long ways on the lowest height, bringing it towards the front left. Sorry, so it's long ways but pointed towards the front. So basically you're going to bring your foot to the top of the block here. So having that there and then bringing your hands down to the mat. You're going to, if you need to use your left hand to do this, it's fine. But you're going to bring your left foot forward onto the top of that block. Important thing here about the crescent lunge is you never want that front knee going past the toes on that left foot and you want to be pushing into the shin on that back leg to take the weight out of the knee and protect your knees, okay? So if this is a good intensity where you're at, great, you're going to hold here. If you want to make it more intense, you're going to bring the hands down to help stabilize you and you're going to walk the foot back, okay? If it's too intense, Obviously the opposite, walk that back foot forward. All right, so you're gonna play with this by adjusting the back leg. And when you feel like, oh, I've got good work, good stretching to those hips, you're gonna release the hands to the top of that front leg. Interlace the fingers here, and then open the shoulders. We're gonna be holding here in this lovely crescent lunge variation for a few breaths. So you can like, gazing forward, or of course, if you'd like to really just kind of zen yourself out, you can close your eyes. If you want to do a little bit of a bonus work into the back, you can swoop the arms up and going into a little crescent lunge perhaps with your back. Whatever you're feeling like today, holding here for just two more slow breaths. And then to come out of this, slowly release the hands down to the mat and bringing that leg back towards the body, coming back to hands and knees, and then moving the block over to the right side. Of course, going to the right side now, 
You never can do just one side of the body. So that is long ways on the mat, and then bringing that right foot so it comes to the top of the block. Remember your adjustments here are moving that back leg so that that front knee never goes beyond the toes. So maybe going a little deeper or coming up a bit wherever you're at today, staying there. If you're feeling that balance when you're ready, you're going to release the hands, bringing them interlacing the fingers to the top of that quadricep and finding what level you're at. Trying to do the same on the right side as you did on the left so that you are bringing more balance symmetry into your body. Playing with the pose maybe if you did that on the other side. We're here for four more breaths, really opening that lovely hip flexor area on our left hip. Last slow breath here. Beautiful, guys. So gently come up out of this, bringing the hands back to the mat, and slowly releasing that right knee back. I'm going to release all of this with a few lovely cat cows. So hands come down to the mat, shoulder width distance apart. You're pushing into the shins here on our legs. Moving through three cat cows here. So inhale, looking up and forward. Exhale, pull the belly in, round the spine, drop the chin down. Inhale, looking up. And exhale, curve the spine, chin to chest. Last one, guys, drop the belly. And exhale, moving through cat. Nice. Inhale to tabletop. And now we're going to be moving to a seat. So grabbing again that block, really using our lovely yoga block today. And we're going to move towards Uttanasana, which is forward fold. Now the nice thing, obviously yoga blocks are great for if you're not quite flexible enough for a pose, they kind of give you a little bit of height, a little bit of space to work towards it, to be stable in it. They're also really nice for kind of using to help you go deeper or to strengthen our arms like we did earlier, really pressing on the block, making that nice static kind of movement to increase our strength. So we're gonna use this block in our forward fold depending on where you're at today. So it can be something as simple as bringing it under your seat if you need a little bit of height, all right? If you feel that today, you can always bring it underneath your sit bones. You can, if you wanna take it easy today, you can simply bring the block to the tops of the legs and then try to bring your forehead towards the mat to kind of give you that ground, that base for your head. So it can be something as simple as this, dropping the forehead down, grabbing the legs, whatever you feel. Or if you want to go more intensely, you're going to bring the block underneath the feet and you're going to hold on to it to help pull you deeper. All right, so finding where you want to be today with this lovely yoga block. We're going to stay in our forward fold here, so you can always play with it and go into different things. But finding where you want to be today and go into that variation for yourself. Slowing down your breath, make sure you're not holding your breath here at any time. Trying to get that forehead closer down to the legs. Relaxing the face. If you're feeling any kind of pain in your knees, you can always even bend the knees a little. Give yourself a micro bend. If you bring the block under the knees, don't hyperextend your knees here. Okay. So if you feel like you're maybe in danger of causing a little hyperextension here, bring the block under here. Give yourself that space. And again, grabbing the hands on the legs wherever you like. Okay. And then to come out of this, you're going to release the block off to the side. And then slowly inhale, draw the hands up the front of the legs. And again, we're squeezing all the way to the top, but open the shoulders back this time. Squeeze them up. And exhale, release. Very nice. 
Next, we're gonna be moving down to our mat. Again, having the yoga block nearby, and if you have two yoga blocks, go ahead and grab them both. Come into a reclined position, and I will meet you there. Okay, my friends, we are in the home stretch now. Just a few more poses before that awesome Shavasana is waiting for you. So we're gonna to move to bridge pose, and we're gonna do with a little variation by using our blocks. So to start, you want to have your feet hip width distance apart, your feet are on the mat, your arms are beside the body. And you're gonna have the block where you can easily grab them with your hands, okay? So when you're ready, you're going to inhale, start to lift the hips up. Think about like one vertebra at a time peeling off the ground. And you're making a nice straight line, your chin is tucked towards the chest. You don't turn your head, so I'm not gonna turn to look at you in the camera, you might twist your neck. So keep that chin tucked down towards the chest. And you're just squeezing here. This is a great little gentle inversion you can do just as is. And if you want to bring the blocks into it to give you a bit more support and help you hold it, you're going to hold the blocks, grab them, and you're going to have them bring them to the sacrum, which is that triangular shaped bone at the base of your spine. So maybe starting on the lowest height, if you like, or coming up to the middle, bringing it to that sacrum, or if you're feeling very flexible, you can lift the hips up really high and bring yourself up to that highest height on your block. To the sacrum, arms by the body, or you can interlace the fingers underneath your back. So holding here, and this is kind of where you want to stay today, then you can stay. Or we can do a little bit of a play here with this. I recommend that you be on the lowest or the middle height of the block for this though. When you're on that highest one, it's not as wide of a base of the block, so it can get a little too wobbly. We don't want to twist our back here, we're just doing some nice work. So maybe going to that middle height here. We're going to start with our left leg. You're going to bring that left knee towards the chest, nice and easy, and then interlace the fingers behind that left leg. Squeezing that left knee in, and now start to release that right leg out straight in front of you. Keeping the heel connected to the mat, and then squeeze here. Again, doing some wonderful work into our hips. While we're still raising our pelvis area higher than our heart, there is still some inversion work going on here. Closing the eyes. Enjoying this stable and gentle inversion. And then we're going to work towards the other side. So slowly draw that right heel along the mat so the right foot comes down to the ground. And then switching legs here. Left foot comes down to the mat. And now your right knee comes towards the chest. Drawing that knee in, and then starting to extend that left leg down the mat. Pointing the toes on the right foot, and the left as well if you wish. Getting into a comfortable, as comfortable as you can be, comfortable position you can hold in for several breaths. Beautiful. To gently come out, draw that left foot back towards the body, and now release the right. For just these last few moments, letting the block out and just coming to a bridge pose, maybe interlacing the fingers, squeezing those shoulder blades together, lifting up those hips nice and high. Inhale and exhale. Slowly release, curving the back one vertebra at a time, and then the hips down last. Wonderful job, guys. So next we're moving to Viparita Karani, which is another inversion that you can use blocks for to really help 
get you a little bit higher off the ground where you can hold it, be stable, but it is a bit of a challenge with balance. So only going to the height that you feel you can. The nice thing again is if you have two blocks, you can stack them, giving yourself a nice wide base to go underneath that sacrum, but still some height, maybe turning that top block so that your sacrum comes here. So just playing with your props, this is what we get yoga props for, is you can kind of adjust your body as you need and where you're at on your journey. All right. So to do this, you're starting the same way we did for bridge. Feet are hip-width distance apart, feet to the mat. And then lifting the hips up, bringing the block underneath the sacrum. And again, this is level one. This is where you're at. Stay there. That's awesome. If you have two blocks and you want to go a little higher. Now this is your feet, or both feet are going to be off the ground. So I recommend that you either do your blocks like this or this way. That way is a little bit tricky with your balance, and I don't want you to hurt yourself. So going to where you think you can on the height of this, we're gonna be lifting our legs so that they're going straight up to the sky, All right? So blocks connected to the sacrum, arms are beside the body. And when you're ready, lifting those knees, coming up, and then exhale, extend the legs straight up to the sky. Lovely thing about the burrito karate is if you're feeling not so steady, you can always bring yourself to a wall so you can kind of relax your legs against that wall if you need. Holding here. It's nice to finish with an inversion in your practice. It kind of changes your perspective a bit, but it's really important to sort of draw that blood flow back up towards the heart. Great way to finish it off, especially before our Shavasana. So enjoying this pose here. Feet are flexed, legs are strong, face is relaxed. Closing the eyes and slowing down the breath. And hopefully by now you're starting to feel that little pins and needles feeling of what you get when your blood is flowed out of your extremities. And that's what you want. That's a good indication. When your feet start to go a little numb, that's actually a good thing for this. All right. So you can always hang out here longer if you like, or if you want to move out of this with me. You're going to slowly bend the knees, bringing them back towards the chest. And then one foot at a time, coming back down to the earth. A controlled manner, letting the body come out of this very softly. Pushing into the feet to pick up the hips and release the blocks from underneath you. And moving, as promised, towards that Shavasana. Okay, so maybe... If you're feeling it, you can always grab a pillow or a blanket if you need that little extra support to get yourself comfortable for the Shavasana. You can use the blocks if you don't have a pillow or blanket, maybe bring them under the knees. Give yourself a little micro bend here, support a micro bend in the knees. And you want to let your feet fall out so the toes open up, falling towards the edge of the mat. Your arms come beside the body with the palms faced up to the sky so that your shoulder blades can connect to the earth underneath you. Okay, so maybe noticing just checking through the body to see if there's any little spots of tension that you haven't released yet. If you do notice that little spot of tightness, you can always inhale and squeeze that muscle, squeeze that area, and then exhale, release it. I love the idea, that image in your head of being like hot butter on a pan. You're melting into the pan. Maybe ice cream on the sidewalk on a hot summer day. So you really want to think about letting the body fully let go, relax as much as you can. Keeping the eyes closed. Bringing your awareness inward. And giving yourself this time in Shavasana to fully relax 
and integrate all of that work we've done.
All right, my friends. You're always welcome to stay in a longer Shavasana, of course. But if you're ready to come out, start to move your fingers and your toes. Bring your awareness back into this room, into your body. Making circles with the wrist and the ankles. And then one at a time, bending the knees, bringing the knees all the way towards your chest to give yourself a big hug here. Squeezing your knees in. And on your next exhale, rolling over on your right side so that your right shoulder, right hip come down to the mat. Your left hand comes to the ground in front of the torso. And when you're ready, you're going to push into that left hand, the right arm. Draw yourself up to your final seat today. So maybe if you do want to use that block, you can bring it underneath your seat, underneath those sit bones here. Sitting up nice and tall. Letting the eyes stay closed through this though, letting the mind stay as quiet as possible. And relaxing the arms by the body. In this quiet moment, remember your intention that you created for this practice, if you joined me in that. That goal for yourself or the hope that wish for another. So as always, feeling gratitude for the decision you made to do yoga today, for your body responding to your wishes, doing the best that it can. And especially feel gratitude for your heart, the essence of who you are that brought you to this place today feeling the peace that comes from a wonderful yoga practice. Carry that peace out with you. Bringing your hands together at your heart. We'll finish this practice as we began with our three deep breaths. On the inhale, moving the arms in a circle to the top. Palms touch. And then on the exhale, hands come back towards your center and chant OM if you wish. So exhaling fully, pressing the hands a little tighter together. Inhale, arms swoop out to the side. Palms touch and OM. Please feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and leave any feedback that you wish below. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you again on the mat very soon. Namaste.